So I want to show you how you can solve trig equations. I'm going to show you just some basic ones to start with. We'll find particular solutions and we'll find a general solution. So where we're going to start is over here with the unit circle. And unit, right, when I say unit, that means radius 1. So the radius is 1. And I'm going to come back to this over and over. What I need you to know, so the radius is 1. Okay. Theta is the rotation from the positive x-axis, and the ordered pairs along the outside of this circle are the cosine of theta and the sine of theta. So this point right here that I've labeled is cosine theta, sine theta. So if you know what theta is, you can find the x-y pairs, as long as you know your unit circle. So I'm going to stop real quick. I'm going to put in a unit circle, and I am just going to do quadrant one here. And then I'm going to refer back to this unit circle. I'm just going to do quadrant one, and then I can figure out the values are going to be the same in the other three quadrants, except for the plus and minus part of it. I'm just going to do the common angles. So we'll start here at theta equals zero. Right? So at theta equals zero, remember it's a unit circle. So the x value is one, right, the radius. And there goes the dog, fabulous. So this is when theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi, right? Up here at the top, when theta equals pi halves, right, what's the ordered pair? What's the xy pair there? Right? It's 0 in the x direction, 1 in the y, right, because that's the radius of this circle. So then our other angles, we do pi sixths, and we do pi fourths, and we do pi thirds. Okay, so those are the theta values we're going to talk about. So then I just need to know their ordered pairs. Okay. And here's how I remember it. I know my values that I'm looking between are root 3 over 2, 1 over root 2. By the way, I don't rationalize denominators. If you do, go ahead. And then 1 half. So I'm going to pick right, one of these three values to be all of my ordered pairs over here. Those are just the values that they are. You know it or you don't. You can figure it out with triangles, um, or you can just trust me. So uh, in order of, so these are largest to smallest, the way I've written them down. So if we think about, right, where those x values are depending on the angles. You can see over here at pi sixths, my x value is the biggest it can ever be. So that x value is the root 3 over 2. And my y value is the smallest it can be. That means it's the 1 half. Okay. So the cosine of pi sixths is root 3 over 2. The sine of pi sixths is 1 half. Okay. So then for pi fourths, that's the one that's right in the middle, which is um, 1 over square root 2, and pi fourths, right, 45, the x and the y are the same. So these are both 1 over root 2. And then for pi thirds, they exactly flop. So it's 1 half is the x value, it's the smallest, and the y value is the root 3 over 2. And I'm sorry, that got small. That's how I do things. Okay. So now, if I were over here in quadrant 4, let's say I had... Let's say theta was negative pi sixths. Okay. It's going to have the same x value, right, as positive pi sixths, but the y value will be the opposite. So the cosine or the yeah, cosine of negative pi sixths is root three over two, but the sine of negative pi sixths is negative one half, right? Because it's the y value would be negative there. So this is how I'm going to use my unit circle. So let's go ahead and solve some trig equations. So cosine of theta equals 0. So our goal is to figure out what theta is. Okay. So I've recopied my unit circle, so it's not that messy one anymore. So where is the cosine? For what angles is cosine equal to 0? So where on my unit circle are the x values? Because right, cosine relates to the x values. Where on my unit circle are my x values 0? Okay. And that's going to be here at the top and bottom. Well, what are those angles? Okay. Well, it's when theta equals right, pi halves. Right Up here, cosine is 0. 
And then again, when I get down here to the bottom, right, cosine will be zero again. So that is three pi halves. So zero pi halves pi, three pi halves, two pi, and you can keep going. If you go counterclockwise, they're positive. Counterclockwise, I'm sorry, counterclockwise, they're positive. Clockwise, they're negative. Okay, so, and we could just keep going. So pi halves, three pi halves, four pi halves, five pi halves, etc. So these would be particular solutions, right? I'm actually listing individual values. And if you wanted, right, you could put set, comma, dot, 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 set braces on it. Now, if I wanted to write just a general solution so that someone could generate all of these, right, if I get tired of writing that, it's like, okay, well, how would I describe that pattern? So we pick one of the angles, so our general solution, and we usually pick the smallest, so pi halves, and then how do I get the rest of those? So if I start here, to get to the next one, I add pi, right? And then to get the next one, I add pi to get back up here, and pi to get down here. So the way we say that is plus pi times n. So this is the general solution. Okay, so let's do the same thing for this next one. So I have the sine of theta equals 1 half. So where is sine? the y values, where do those equal one half on my unit circle? Okay. So I'm looking for a y value of one half. It's over here at that pi sixths. So this is going to happen when theta equals pi sixths. Okay. Where does it happen next? Right, Because it's a circle. We can keep going around and around. So notice that one half is positive, and here my one half is positive. Where else are you going to hit a positive y value of 1 half? Right? It's going to be over here in quadrant 2. Right? So what is this theta value? Well, a couple ways you can think about it. Right? I know it's pi sixths this way. Here's how I think about it. Right? So this amount here from the negative x-axis up is pi sixths. All the way across would be right, pi, or 6 pi sixths would be here, and I'm 1 pi sixths shy of that. So that means that would be 5 pi six. I think my dog's about to have another little writhing thing on the floor. He's having fun, so don't worry. He's not in pain. He's just um, yeah, scratching his back on the floor. Okay, so right, and we can keep going. So I've got pi sixths, 5 pi six. Come back around. Oh, I hit this one again, so past... 12 pi sixths, so one more would be 13 pi sixths, right? And I can keep going until I get over here again. So these would be our particular solutions. I'm listing them. The general solution. This time I need to write it in two separate um, times because it's not just pi each time. So I hit, over here I hit pi sixths, and the next time I hit this exact point on the in quadrant one, is after I've gone a full 2 pi around. So I would say theta equals pi sixths plus 2 pi n, and theta equals 5 pi sixths plus 2 pi n. Right? So there would be my general solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and let's up it a little bit. So this time, instead of just being theta, I have three theta. So we're going to find the general solution, and we're going to then find all of the particular solutions on 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so sine 3 theta equals 1. Here comes the inner circle again. So where is sine equal to 1? Right? Up top. It's not down at the bottom, right? Down here, sine is negative 1. I don't want that one. I just want positive 1. So I'm only going to, right, be a solution when I hit these top values. So I want, so think about what you want the angle, that 3 theta, to equal. So I want 3 theta to equal pi halves. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the general solution first. So I want it to be pi halves and then I want to be able to, right, hit here every time I come around. Well, it takes a full 2 pi to get back there, so that'll be plus 
2 pi n. Okay, so I'm on my way. So I want my angle, right? I want the argument of sine to be 3 theta, I want 3 theta to be pi halves plus 2 pi n. Okay. Well, that would be fine, right, if we were solving for 3 theta. I want to know what theta equals. So now we just divide by 3. So I divide all three terms by 3. And then we're going to tidy. So I have theta equals pi sixths plus 2 thirds pi n. Okay. So here is my general solution. And then to find the particular solutions, we're just going to run through integer values of n until we go through all, everything that could be, right, until we get past 2 pi, and then we'll know to stop. Okay? So if n is 0, right, theta is pi sixths. If n is 1, and I'm going to go ahead and just to make my math easier, I'm going to make that a 4 pi sixths just so that I don't have to do common denominators each time. Right? Okay, so if n is 1, I'm going to have 5 pi sixths. If n is 2, that'll make this 8 plus 1 is 9 pi sixths. Yes, you can reduce that. If n is 0, 1, 2, if n is 3, I'm going to get 12, 13 pi sixths. I think that one's too big. Yes, that's too big. I can stop there because, right, 13 pi six is past 2 pi. So here are my particular solutions. Okay, so I want to show you on the calculator, which, by the way, will do these um, inverse trigs for you. So I have it set up. I have my mode set up in radians. I'm in function mode. I'm going to go to um, y1, and I'm going to do sine 3x. And when we hit do the graph, so remember that 3, that, that um, changes your period to be 2 pi thirds. Um, so I'm finding all of those times between 0 and 2 pi. And I think my 2 pi is over, um, I have my, my window going out from negative pi. Pretty sure this is um, 2 and a half pi. So we're looking at all of those times when I am up here at 1. So pi sixths, 5 pi sixths, 9 pi sixths. Right? So I must stop before I get to that last one. Okay, so let's do another one. So cosine squared x plus 1 half cos x equals 0. Ideas? Sure, right? Math teachers love to make students factor at all times. So we'll go ahead and factor out a cosine x. He's behind a cosine x plus 1 half. 0. I've got a product equaling 0, so then we set each factor equal to 0. And solve each of those independently. Um, so cosine x equals 0. We can go ahead and do that one here on our unit circle. So what x value? So for our general solution, where is cosine equal to 0? Okay, so we've actually solved this one already, right? It's up top if you just look up there. So it's top and bottom. So this is one where it actually does right, go back and forth by pi's. So x equals pi halves plus pi n. I'll wait and we'll get all of our general or our particular solutions in a second. So here's part of my general solution. Let's come over here and find the general solutions that relate to the factor cosine x plus 1 half equals 0. So cosine x equals negative 1 half. Okay, so using the unit circle now, I want my x values to be negative 1 half. Where is that going to happen? Okay, so the cosines are 1 half when I'm up at pi thirds, right? But I want to be negative, so that means I'm over here in quadrant 2 for that pi thirds. And also down here, in quadrant 3. So the cosine's negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So I need to find those pi thirds, right? Those um, particular angles. So let's see, pi thirds. So pi thirds up from here. So that would be 2 pi thirds. Okay. 
And then down here, that is 3 pi thirds plus one of them, so 4 pi thirds. Okay, so the particular solutions for cosine, I'm sorry, the general solutions for cosine x equals negative 1 half. So x equals 2 pi thirds plus 2 pi n, right, because I need to hit that spot every time I come around. And then 4 pi thirds plus 2 pi n. So there are our general solutions. To get the particulars then, we're just going to go through the different integer values of n. Um, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to worry about you getting them in order. So just hit stop when you get past 2 pi. So n equals 0, so pi halves. n equals 1, 3 pi halves. Uh, n equals 2, 2 pi plus that, 2 and a half pi. I'm back, I'm beyond. Okay, so then over to here, n equals 0 will be 2 pi thirds. Um, n equals 1. Sorry, I should stay up here. So, oh, oh that's going to be 2 pi plus something, so I'm beyond, so I don't need anything else from there. And so the same thing here, then I would just need the 4 pi thirds. Okay, and there are all of our particular solutions. Okay, I want to do two more. Um, if you think you've got it, I guess you can stop. If you want some more, let's do a tangent and a cosecant. So I'm going to do non-cosine and sine to show you how we can use our unit circle for those. Okay, so tan of pi or x over 2 equals 1 over square root 3. So remember, tangent x equals sine x over cosine x. So we need to figure out where the y over x value is equal to 1 over root 3. Okay. So notice the, that all of my, my pi thirds and my si pi sixths both have halves in the bottom. So those are going to cancel when we do our divisions. So the, the twos here right, in my, my two points, well, the denominators are going to cancel when I flip and multiply. Okay. So I want to figure out then when cosine has a square root 3 in the top. And that's right here on my pi sixths. Okay? And you can check just to make sure. So let's just make sure that the tangent of pi sixths, oops, sorry. So we're just doing a little make sure. Tangent of pi sixths, make sure that that's going to be 1 over root 3. So tangent of pi sixths is equal to the sine of pi sixths divided by the cosine of pi sixths, right? So the sine of pi sixths is one half. The cosine of pi sixths is root three over two. Take the denominator, flip and multiply. So I have one half times two over root three. There's those denominators of two canceling. So yep, it is one over root three. Okay, so all of that was just right convincing ourselves that the tangent of pi sixths is one over root three. So now we know when that happens, right? We happens at pi sixths. And then the other place that I get a tangent equal to positive 1 over root 3 is over here in quadrant 3, where both the sine and the cosine are negative. So when I do the division, the two negative signs are going to cancel. Okay. So when I do my general solution, oh, hold on, I guess I, sorry, I forgot I have a, an x over 2. I'm making it even more difficult for us. That's okay. Here we go. Let me erase all that. Oh, my little white out thing is slowly dying. Okay, so I need x over 2 to equal pi sixths plus, okay, for tangent. Tangent's kind of nice, because, right, I hit pi sixths to get over to this one in quadrant 3, I add pi. Right, so this is pi across. If I add pi again, I get back up here. So I only need to do this one plus pi n. I don't need to do separate ones for um, quadrants 1 and 3. So if you have quadrants 1 and 3 or 2 and 4, you're almost right. I'm not going to say always because who knows what somebody can throw at you. Um, but right, you can usually just do your first angle plus pi n. If you're in adjacent quadrants for your solution, you're going to have to write 2 because you can't just get across from one to the other with a pi. 
So pi halves equals pi 6 plus pi n. So to solve for x, right, multiply everybody by 2. So um, 2 pi sixths plus 2 pi n. So here's our general solution. Okay. So then to get to particulars, just run through the values of n. So n equals 0 will give us that 2 pi 6. I'll go ahead and simplify that one. So pi thirds. Um, as soon as n equals 1, right, I've gone past 2 pi because it's 2 pi plus. So we just have one particular solution on 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So last one, cosecant 2x equals 2. So again, this is just so that we can practice our trig identities, our, our reciprocal identities, things like that. So cosecant x is 1 over sine x. And so if it's cosecant 2x, that's 1 over sine 2x. So that means I really need to know when is the sine of 2x equal to 1 half. So the algebra I just did there, right, I haven't done the trig yet. Well, okay, this part here was trig. So cosecant, that's 1 over sine 2x equals 2. Okay, so I just used a trig identity from here to here. And now um, you can take the reciprocal of both sides, raise both sides to the negative 1, and that's where how we get to sine 2x equals 1 half. Okay, and I'm sure we've solved that one already, but that's okay. Here we go. So where is my sine equal to 1 half? So that's here at that pi 6 again, and over here at 5 pi 6. So I need 2x to be pi sixths plus 2 pi n. So my solutions are in adjacent quadrants. So that means I need to do the plus 2 pi n. And 2x equals 5 pi sixths plus 2 pi n. Divide by 2 in both of them. So x equals ooh, pi twelfths plus pi n and x equals 5 pi twelfths plus pi n. And here is the general solution. Then to get your particulars, I'm going to run through those values of n. So n equals 0, pi twelfths. n equals 1, uh, 13 pi twelfths. That should be enough. n equals 2. It's 2 pi plus something, so we're done. And then the same thing down here on our 5 pi twelfths general. So n equals 0, 5 pi twelfths, and n equals 1. So 12 plus 5 is 17 pi twelfths. Okay, so that's how you can find general and particular solutions for trig equations using your unit circle. I highly recommend you have um, a unit circle, at least quadrant one, handy when you're doing these. Um, just so you don't have to think that hard about it. You can just look at your circle.